Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I'm a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. If you have a dog that's showing symptoms of food refusal or bloody stools, diarrhea, vomiting, seizures, or if your pet has recently passed due to an illness, this might be a beneficial video for you. And if you're feeding any of the foods mentioned in this video, this might be a beneficial video for you. My intent is to just relay information, maybe give a little bit of extra context that you may need or want to have, but ultimately I'm giving you the information so that you can make whatever decisions are going to be best for your pets. You can work with your veterinarian for your own pets um, and come up with a solution that works best for you based on information. Maybe a year ago now, I did a video when Champion Pet Foods, the makers of Origin and Akina, were bought out by a larger company as just a way to inform you guys of things going on. And I got a lot of comments on that video showing appreciation for bringing that to your attention, how you maybe wouldn't have known that they were bought out by a larger company or what implications might go along with that unless I'd pointed it out. So we are coming back to you with a similar video, kind of a here's what's going on in pet food type video um, to hopefully give you a little bit of information so that you can take that information and do whatever you feel is going to be best for your pets. I came across this information on Facebook from Dr. Judy Morgan who is a veterinarian that does a lot of work in more holistic wellness when it comes to pets. So talking a lot about pet food, good ingredients versus bad ingredients, um, different manufacturing practices. Right now they're doing a whole like week-long informational thing about vaccines and titer testing. Dr. Judy Morgan is one of those really great resources that we have within this community and that helps to kind of continue to teach you and educate you on that level. Now Dr. Morgan did post something maybe a week or two ago. Dr. Morgan posted this on the Dr. Judy Morgan's Naturally Healthy Pets Facebook page on January 9th and has given a couple of updates and so after seeing everything kind of going on, I am bringing those updates and that information to you. On January 9th, Dr. Morgan took to the Dr. Judy Morgan's Naturally Healthy Pets Facebook page to basically report on an uprise in different illness symptoms that have been caused by pets eating Purina dog food. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna read the original post and we'll talk a little bit more about it. So originally posted January 9th, but with an update on January 10th, symptoms include food refusal, bloody vomiting and or diarrhea, seizures and death. If you think your pet's food is causing or has caused illness or death, please complete this survey. And I'm gonna leave that survey down in the description box below for you as well. This began with a significant rise in consumer reports of sick pets eating Purina pet food. We are now seeing the same alarming symptoms across multiple brands of pet food. This has happened previously when there were contaminations at the supplier level, which multiple brands purchase from. If your pet is exhibiting any of these symptoms, stop the food immediately, contact a veterinarian, and please complete this survey, which I will leave in the description box below. Save the pet food. Do not release it to the manufacturer in any circumstances. Contact your vet and request a copy of your pet's medical records. Ask the vet to report your concerns to the pet food company. Now the emphasis on this is to not relinquish all of your food to the manufacturer. Um, as of right now, and we'll get more into this later on, there are no recalls, but by sending all of your food to the manufacturer for their own testing or their own disposal, you lose a value valuable piece of information. Um, a lot of the pet owners within this already have sent samples of their pet's food to an independent uh, lab for independent study to see what could possibly be causing these issues. Once you relinquish that food, you lose that ability to uh, kind of test in for other organizations um, trying to get to the root cause. We'll get more into it later, but there are also some other issues that may arise in going through the manufacturer directly to get this kind of severity of situation handled. Uh, contact your vet and request a copy of your pet's medical records. Ask the vet to report your concerns to the pet food company. Report it to the FDA, and there's a link there that I'll include in the description below. Report it to the pet food company. Do not agree to send them the food. If you feel compelled to do so, only send a small portion. Keep the rest of the food in the freezer. Do not send the medical records to the pet food company. Document your conversation with the pet food company. The pet food company may eventually say they will pay your vet bills and reimburse you for your pet food. If you agree to this, they will ask you to sign a form which will prohibit you from taking legal action. 
Eventually, if there's a class action lawsuit, you'll be unable to join if you do this or if you want to file your own lawsuit. The Facebook group Saving Pets One Pet at a Time is where the list of brands implicated is continuously being updated. This is a group of volunteers doing their best. Please be patient as we provide updates. So this original post from January 9th, updated on January 10th, is really encouraging any pet owners that feel like their situation falls into these categories. They have pets who've experienced um, these kinds of symptoms. Absolutely take your pet to the vet, make as much documentation of everything going on as possible, and cautiously in this instance view the pet food company as a potential opponent in a legal suit. There was then an update one day ago as of the day that I'm filming, so the update was on January 18th, um, and that update lists a couple of the pet food brands that are implicated um, or have had complaints in this realm put against them. Disclosure, at this time there are no official recalls for these brands yet. Samples have been sent to an independent laboratory for testing. We do not have information on a specific contaminant at this time. If you believe any brand of pet food is causing illness or death, stop the food immediately, report it to the FDA through the link that I'm going to include in the description, contact your veterinarian, request a copy of your pet's medical records, report your concerns to the pet food company, and ask your vet to do the same. And then they ask that you please complete the survey. Again, I'll leave it in the description. There are still a number of brands that are coming out that have similar symptoms to the ones we already talked about. Over the last week, I've seen the list of brands continue to grow of different pet foods that, you know, we're having a similar experience with. If you're feeding these pet foods, it does not automatically mean that your pet's going to be affected. But I would say that if you are feeding these foods in particular that we're about to get into, that you definitely monitor your pet for any of these symptoms. Um, and if you wish to switch on to something else, we can talk about that at the end of some things that make for a really easy switch. Whether you stay on that food or not is totally up to you. If right now you're getting a little goose bumpy, we'll talk, we'll get there. Um, this began with a significant rise in consumer reports of sick pets eating Purina pet food. We are now seeing the same symptoms across different brands of pet food which happened previously when there was contamination at the supplier level. Multiple brand purchased the same contaminated material. Save the pet food. Do not agree to send the pet food company the food. If you feel compelled to do so, only send a small portion. Keep the rest of the food in the freezer in original packaging. Do not send the medical records to the pet food company. Document your conversation with the pet food company. Um, it has that same warning about if you offer, or if the pet food company offers to pay vet bills, you may be giving up your rights to a potential lawsuit in the future. It is your choice ultimately of what you feed your pets. Dr. Morgan has a list of pet foods that they recommend that I'll include linked in the description box, but I'll also talk about some other options at the end of the video as well. As of January 18th, 2024, pet parent consumer reports of bloody diarrhea, vomiting, lethargy, food refusal. The brands are For Health, Akana, Blue Buffalo, Hills, Instinct, Kirkland, Merrick, Origin, Organics, Pure Balance, Purina, Royal Canin, Stellan Chewies, and Taste of the Wild. And that list has the potential to continue to grow. When I saw this list, one of the things that I first thought was a potential cause of all of this is multiple brands being manufactured by the same company. This is something that we do see often within pet food is we'll have a big name brand and then a bunch of smaller brands underneath and sometimes if one of those brands has a problem because they're being manufactured in the same place it's likely for another brand under that same name to have a similar problem. What's interesting about this case in particular is that there's a wide range of manufacturers and of parent companies. Dr. Morgan has this infographic that I am including here um, that goes a little bit more in depth of some of the six top pet food manufacturers. It's often something that not everyone thinks of, that it's really, for the most part, when you go to big box store pet stores, only so many companies that own all of the foods that you're looking at. Um, so you can definitely look more into that if you're interested in knowing where your food comes from. But for our 
namesake, I took just the foods that we're looking at today that were included in that list. Um, and we're going to take a look at where all those foods come from. There are some that share a similar manufacturer or similar company owner. For example, Nestle makes both Purina or, and Organic. Mars makes Royal Canin, Acana, and Origin. Uh, Colgate Palmolive manufactures Hills. The MJ Smucker Company, Merrick. General Mills, Blue Buffalo. Shell and Campeter, so basically just diamond as a whole, uh, makes the Kirkland food. They do Taste of the Wild. And they also manufacture 4Health, but 4Health itself is owned by Tractor Supply, but it is manufactured by Diamond. AgroLemon, a Spanish company, but manufactured in Lincoln, Nebraska, does Instinct. Ainsworth Pet Nutrition makes Pure Balance, although Pure Balance is owned by Walmart. Um, Ainsworth manufactures the food. And then Stella and Chewy's is the only one on this list that is considered independent. Stella and Chewy's is owned and manufactured by Stella and Chewy's. I talk a lot on my channel about sourcing, ingredient sourcing, and how typically the larger a company is, the less specific their sourcing is. This is done for a couple different reasons. The two big ones are profit. Once you get to be a big enough company, oftentimes you start looking more at profit than quality. Um, and that can influence sourcing decisions. The other reason is because once you've scaled your business to a large enough space, sometimes the access to the higher quality ingredients that you were able to do before aren't enough to meet the demand of the product. So why does all that matter? I talk about sourcing and pet food because things like this do have the ability to happen. They can absolutely happen to independent pet food manufacturers, 100%. As we can see, that's not necessarily a factor, but when you are working with a larger business like this, chances are all of these companies have the same supplier of something. It could be the same supplier of rice. It could be the same supplier of chicken. It could be the same vitamin mix supplier. Something in the supply line has been contaminated and it seems like all of these companies we're using that contaminated supplier to source their ingredients from. Going with a smaller or independent company doesn't at all mean that it's impossible for this to happen, but it does have the potential to lessen those risk factors. Ultimately, it looks like there's not one particular company or food that this is being affected by, um, but it's instead even above those companies looking at the supply chain, something that is going into these pet foods being bought by a third party has been contaminated and is causing problems. If you are feeding any of these foods and you are now nervous, I hear you. Just because this is affecting some dogs does not mean that it's going to be affecting all dogs. Um, if you are still comfortable feeding these foods and you are not noticing any symptoms in your pets, more power to you if that's what you feel is going to be best for your situation. If you are noticing symptoms, Stop feeding what you're feeding and talk to your vet and go through all of the steps that Dr. Morgan has recommended. And if you are feeding these foods, you're not showing any symptoms, but you are nervous and you want to switch to something else, there are a couple of recommendations um, that I can give. Before I give these recommendations, we're going to keep in mind this is a growing list, so we don't know the extent of all of the pet food brands that are implicated in this, that are being affected. Um, but one of my favorite recommendations for a decently priced pet food that can fit a lot of different needs is Nutrisource. Nutrisource has been around for over 50 years and I believe that they've only had one recall in the history of their company. Regardless, Nutrisource in general does have a really good um, track record. They have grain-free options, they have grain-inclusive options, limited ingredient options, they have high-protein options. Choice is their kind of bare-bones, most affordable option. Um, they have a lot of options for people at a lot of different price ranges and a lot of different needs. And I've also found that because it's a more nutritionally dense food, you often have to feed less of it if you were feeding something like Purina, which helps to make it more affordable in that way as well. I have a video all about affordable pet food brands that I'll go ahead and link in the description below if that's a big factor for you. I know, depending on where you are in the world, Financially, we're all going through it a little bit. Um, so that might be a helpful resource for you as you look for alternative options. Nutrisource is um, a, one that I recommend often. The other benefit to Nutrisource is that they add probiotics 
directly to the majority of their formula. So if you're having to switch quickly without doing a transition, it's still best to do a transition, um, but because it has that high level of pre and probiotics, it helps to make that quick switch easier. If you're unable to go with Nutrisource or you don't want to go with Nutrisource, First Mate is another one that I like. Brahm is another one that I like. The Pets Global Foods, so Inception and Signature and Essence are all great as well. Those are generally ones that I recommend. There's a large variety of price ranges within those recommendations. Um, there's a large variety of needs within those recommendations. So whether you have sensitive bellies, non-sensitive bellies, grain-free, grain-inclusive, you want high protein, you don't need high protein, you have pet allergies, whatever the case may be, there's probably something within those that would work for you if you're wanting to switch. I'm also going to leave in the description um, Dr. Morgan's list of foods that they recommend in case any of that's helpful for you as well. From my understanding this is all kibble based, not necessarily canned based, but I could be wrong. That's something to keep into consideration as well if you're feeding a canned food from any of these brands. It might be worth it to switch if that's what you're leaning toward. You are feeding um, raw food from any of these brands. I believe Stella and Chewies might be the only one. Primal is a great option to switch over to. So with all that said and done, that is the current situation. If this doesn't apply to you at all, I hope you found it interesting. Um, gives you some extra things to just be aware of. If this does affect you and does apply to you, I hope that now you are made aware of the situation and you're able to continue to do more research, look into it, talk to your vet if need be and figure out whatever is going to be the best reaction to this information that you are capable of and that you believe is going to be right for you and your pets. Things like this can often be nuanced so I definitely don't want to see any hate or blame in the comments about people's choices regarding this or their feelings about all of this. I don't really think that's going to be a problem but I feel the need to say it anyway. If there are any major developments in this story I would be more than happy to update you either as a pinned comment or potentially in another video if need be or if you'd prefer that way. All the other information is going to be available through the Dr. Judy Morgan's Naturally Healthy Pets Facebook page. That's where I've been getting a lot of this information. I'm going to leave that in the description below as well as all of the different links that I've mentioned that may be helpful to you. If you found this video helpful be sure to give it a like. Um, as big things like this happen I would love to keep you updated as long as that's still something that you are interested in. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I talk about pet food and nutrition as well as training and behavior. Until then, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!